first of all, thank you so much for coming. Um, our coaching staff and everyone is really excited about putting this on. And I think you're, you will have a great time and you were going to learn some football. Football 101. Love the game and always ready to learn a lot more. It's just such a wonderful community builder. And uh, so many women, even women my age, uh, are really interested in sports. Quick. We base everything in our program on foundation, family, future, and football. Those are our four Fs. You can ask any of our players. Uncommon, this is a creed that we created this year as a coaching staff for our team. Our players, you'll see them, they all wear these uncommon bands. We want them all to be uncommon fathers, uncommon husbands, okay, uncommon teammates, uncommon people in their community. That's what we want them to be. The uncommon football player will come out of that, I promise you. Because we love CU football, and anytime there's an event up here, we'll come up and go. But also so we can learn more about the game. It gives me things to look for, you know, it, the little details, things that I might miss. I mean, we love the game and we tend to watch certain players, but we like to know what's going on as well. Particularly for the part that's out on the field, it's kind of fun for the women and it's a fun time and it's, it's maybe a little freer for me anyway. My name is Brian Lindgren. Uh, I'm the offense coordinator, quarterback coach. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our offense, um, some philosophy stuff that we have here. We're a no huddle offense here and you might say, why, why no huddle? Why is everybody uh, no huddle these days? Why does anybody huddle up anymore? And I think the reason is you want to put pressure on the defense. You're not allowing the defense to substitute their personnel. Okay, they're going to be tired and we're also at 5,000 feet elevation up here, which is a huge advantage to us. Right? And we call it the box, basically the tackle box. From tackle to tackle in this box right here, they've got six guys in there. Right? And so we want to run the ball versus that look. This is a really good look. We want to run the ball versus that look. Okay? You know what? It was just such an amazing opportunity to get together with girlfriends and I mean, I know football, I watch football, but there's still questions that you feel foolish asking when you're with your husband or with the guys. It was just a good opportunity to, um, to get together with their girlfriends and learn more about the game. And the first thing we talked about is you gotta have passion. You gotta have passion to play the game. You gotta love the game, but why even be here? Because it takes so much time, it's a lot of hard work. We all know that. We wanna play with great, great effort. Great effort. I, I've always said this as, as long as I've been coaching. It doesn't take any talent to, to give great effort. It just takes heart. You know, if you got a lot of heart and you want to, you give the best effort. We can be the best effort team in the league. That, that's what we, we preach. And then compete, compete. Uh, you know, refuse to lose. And that, that again all comes from heart. But coaches asked me to mention what, what is Oklahoma drill? So you got a quarterback, you got an offensive blocker here, you got a defensive man here, you got two bags right there, they're maybe two yards apart, you got the running back here. And the job for the defensive man is to butt, butt that guy, stand him up, it's one on one, it's sheer one on one, you know, get off a block by a defender and make that tackle, that back has to stay in that. But the one I want to concentrate on this concept here is what drives our engine, what makes us go as a defense. Football's changed so much nowadays because offenses are so good. They spread you from sideline to sideline, a lot of vertical game, one, one back running game, the option stuff that Brian showed you where the quarterback reads all that stuff. There's so much involved with it, and there's so much offense nowadays. There's so much scoring. So how do we defend all that, and how do we get better? Okay, and what drives our engine? We, we talk about cr creating turnovers, getting turnovers, stripping the football, fumble recoveries, tipping the football, uh, interceptions, all those. And, and it's not by accident, we work on these every day. I'll show you some drills. So we're setting the front to the back here. We just call this shark. It's just a blitz. So here's what I want you to do. When you watch us play this fall, and we, you see us blitz, just tell your husband, that was shark. May not be. <laughs> it might not be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just tell, oh, that was Shark. You go, yeah, you're probably right. He don't know. He doesn't know. When I was growing up, I didn't have the chance to play football, and I decided this would be a safe place for me to actually learn how to catch, and I brought my daughter because I think it's important, and it's such a part of what families do on weekends, and it's a part, buff football is what we do on weekends, and I want to make sure that I understand what's going on and I can contribute to the conversations. I'm the special teams coordinator. Uh, I've worked very closely with a number of coaches on the staff. One of the cool part about being involved with teams is you get to work with the cross section of the football team. I get to work with wide receivers and DBs alike. I get to work with defensive linemen and offensive linemen alike. And I enjoy that aspect of my job very, very much. Basically, special teams comes down to this, and this is why I have a graphic of a field behind me. 
Anytime you have a voluntary exchange of the football, you want to maximize your net yardage for your team. The number one thing that the offense talked to you about was taking care of the football. The number one thing that the defense talked to you about was taking the football away. And it's very, very important that in a scrimmage kick that you protect the football at all costs until the ball hits the foot. Once the ball hits the foot, you've exchanged possession of the football and you've gone from offense to defense. The idea here from snap to hold to kick is 1.2 seconds. If we, can, if we can work that operation in 1.2 seconds, we feel confident that even if some of these cats were to come unblocked off the edge, that what we refer to as the op, which is the snap, the hold, and the kick, will actually beat that defender attempting to, to block the football. And you're gonna see here that our guys are really, really good at it. I think it's a great idea to hold something like this, especially if you look around this room, you have so many women who are interested in hearing about this. And I think it's a really nice primer to get us ready for the season. It's a great way to get excited about um, what a great team we have, what great student athletes we have, and our coaching staff. Uh, you can't do any of the three aspects you heard from if you don't have players. So this is how we go about as a staff to get the players. First off, all Division I schools are governed by the NCAA or the National Collegiate Athletic Association. They limit our roster at the start of camp, uh, August 1, when we report to 105 players, 85 of which are on scholarship, so 20 young men on the roster at that point are paying their own way through college. Uh, we went through 16 camps in the month of June in the span of 30 days, saw about 3,400 recruits. Uh, collectively, as a staff, we've viewed over 10,000 recruit films. I think a lot of women aren't necessarily comfortable um, talking about sports and learning about sports in an in a environment that's co-ed, and this is a very welcoming environment, and it's also really fun. Chip's here, the coaches are here, and we can ask goofy questions or serious questions. My name is Tyler Baltieris. I'm the assistant equipment manager here for football. We handle all the equipment, whether that's the helmets, shoulder pads, all the Nike apparel, cleats. Everything you see these guys wearing comes from us. So everything that they're wearing is custom to them. A lot of guys in high school were just given their pads and you kind of have to roll with it. But everything pretty much you see here is custom to them. Um, our job here is to keep them on the field as long as possible. All right, under our Nike contract. We have a very big contract with Nike. Um, they're good to us, we're good to them. Um, we are also a Nike testing school which means we get a lot of the prototypes a year or two years in advance. This here is a size 17 offensive lineman cleat. <laughs> this here is a size 9 skill cleat. So you guys can see that we vary from this to this. But we use a lot of different methods and technologies and, and all these different things that we can really get a good feel as to how, are, how ready are you today? How ready is Addison right this second? How ready is Kenneth right this second? I don't know, and it might be two different, two different recovery methods or two different you know, states. What does a Monday practice do to you? I don't know. We gotta find out. In terms of our program, we have a, a long-term development plan. So when you come in as a freshman, you're a lot different than when you're a senior. And I'm, I'm crazy if I throw you into the fire right away. It's basically get your body to the appropriate size for the position you play. So we're gonna show you a couple of those concepts here where again, it's not always about strength, it's more about speed. Because really the game's about speed. When you're working on eccentrics, what you're doing is you're, you're pulling apart all the muscle fibers. It's kind of like Velcro, right? That's how your muscle fibers interact. So we're just shredding them, ripping them apart with the goal being you're gonna grow back stronger tonight, tomorrow, be ready for the next day. That's why recovery is so important. That's why eating is so important. Boom. So it's loud. 